and welcome to Native Stories. Native Stories exists to share the voices of those connected to the land. Aloha mai kako. You are listening to Native Stories podcast. Mahalo for listening in. Ova o nanea lo ko ino no papukule wa humayao no ao ma kaimaki. I am Nanea Lo from Papakule, Oahu, now living in Kaimaki. And today we have Laakea Sanborn. Belina Mai e Laakea. Aloha Mai Kako, Belina Mai Kia Aloha, Mai no Mauna Awakea, no Laakea ko inoa, no Kailua kono Maiao, e Kanaka Ranger Vau, e Awamo Ke Kuleana, o Aloha Aina, o Ya Io. Um, my name is Laakea Sanborn. I'm from Kailua Kono. I'm one of many Kanaka Rangers here who are taking on the responsibility of Aloha Aina and guided huaka'is on the pu'u at this time. Welcome. Um, always good to have new voices and new people sharing the movement. Um, so this is another episode of what I call the Mauna series, where we're here live on Moku'o Keawe or Hawaii Island at Pu'u Honua or Pu'u Hulu Hulu, holding space in solidarity with the Kia'i and protectors of Mauna Awa Kea in the peaceful protest against the 30 meter telescope that has been granted access to be built on Mauna Kea, which is the also the largest mountain in the world. Um, so, we wanted to ask, how did you first get involved with this movement? That's a very interesting question. It's a very personal question for me. Um, back in 2015, maybe even in late late 2014, um, I was kind of one of those people who had experiences with hula and, and my, de- my various different experiences from college and high school time where, you know, there's some peeling or there's some sense of attachment of who we are and where we come from culturally as Kanaka. But basically just watching um, OEV TV and um, everything that was going on and being covered at that time and, you know, seeing people that I grew up in, grew up with in my community of Kona, um, having that Kuei spirit and having the courage and uh, um, the basically just taking it upon themselves to represent um, who they were, their seven generations that came before them and those that will come after them, um, taking on that challenge to um, speak on behalf of the Mauna and speak on behalf of our people. I was watching Oivia and watching these people be arrested that um, I, I know intimately through different experiences and in different ways. And um, I, couldn't, I couldn't continue to just sit on the couch and watch anymore. Um, So I started to make my own trips up. Um, At the time, I was um, training for jujitsu. So I I was using Saddle Road often to get to um, Hilo. So it was always right on the way. Pu'uhuluhulu is always right on the way. So I'd always stop off and kind of show face and become more and more kama'aina with the people who are facilitating this movement and um, some of their theories in terms, not theories, but um, the way that they practice being a kanaka in this time right and and their experiences that have got them to the place that they were in um advocating for Mauna Awakea. so how long have you so that's like was it before 2015 then no i think actually now that i think more accurately about the daytime i think it was all during that 2015 period um that you know, I was kind of paying closer attention to what was going on and building closer relationships with some of the people that are involved, um, some of which are my very dear friends now. Um, but yeah, just holding space, spending the night on the Mauna, um, going up and down as our schedules permitted, right? And um, trying to acclimate ourselves, not just to the climate, but to the um, the heavy sense of kuleana that comes when you start to engage upon these things, um, that are both spiritual, political, and personal all at the same time. Mahalo for that. So, um, can you tell us uh, what is Kanaka Rangers? I can to the best of my EK, to the best of my knowledge. Um, Kanaka Rangers was a program. Um, it wasn't something that we just invented on our own. It's modeled after a program in Australia where the indigenous people of those lands kind of awamod that kuleana on behalf of themselves to steward the land the way that they saw fit. Um, so Kanaka Rangers is actually modeled closely after the success of that program, 
right, where you're getting the native indigenous people of those lands to take on the kuleana of stewardship and also legislation and enforcement of those resources that belong to those people. Um, so that's where the origin, the origination of the Kanaka Rangers start. Um, what they're kind of most known for is Haleoko Hio and kind of testing the jurisdictional boundaries of um, Department of Hawaiian Homelands and the enforcement agency that helps support them, DLNR, Department of Land and Natural Resources, who are all engaged uh, with a lot of us before the actual inception of Kanaka Rangers due to the 2015 exchange um, at Halekukia Imauna. Um, you know, that whole aspect of creating the Be Beneficiary Trust Council, um, a gathering of kupuna, who we represent in terms of those who are on the list waiting to um, get their parcels, um, not divvied out, but they're, they're waiting for their turn to basically claim um, the aina of crown lands that was um, left for us by Kawi Kiauli and um, how he had the foresight to set aside these lands for his people so that we wouldn't have to change our lifestyles and we would be able to live eye to eye with different people that were coming to the islands that had a different thought process about how Aina was used, how it was commodified, and how Kanaka actually have the exact opposite relationship to Aina, where we're a part of that infrastructure as well. You can't separate the Kanaka from the Aina, and you can't separate the Aina from the Kanaka. What happens to one happens to the other. So, can you talk to us and tell us how has Kanaka Rangers kind of evolved from when you have been in, in, in with them? So from like 2015 till now, um, do you guys still have the same membership? Has it grown? Has it shrunk? I think like anything that has to do with um, natural resources, those things grow organically based on the need and um, what needs those people have that are playing a role at certain times. Right. Um, in some of the more politically active things that the Kanaka Rangers are known for, the hui was actually much smaller than what people acknowledge it as today, right? And that seed that was planted in the consciousness of um, Kanaka across the whole Pai Aina, because we do have representation in Kauai, in Maui as well. I'm not sure about in Oahu, and um, we have good friends in Molokai, Molokai, Molokai Nuiahina, but... Um, you know, we do have representation on other islands, but in terms of um, that time period where, they, where they're doing Haleo Kuhio and really holding space, I mean, we're talking about maybe 10 to 20 guys tops, um, which was a very different representation in terms of 2015 when we're seeing like a parade's amount of people at Halikukia Imauna, right? And we're facing DLNR under those terms where the, sh the numbers are definitely in our favor. Um, the I don't want to say that, but um, one of the more um, attractive things about the Kanaka Rangers is the fact that we maintain the presence or my friends maintain a presence on the Mauna after um, some of that um, holding space um, aspect on the Mauna started to die down. The Kanaka Rangers stayed and started to collect data in terms of how the Mauna was being used, what type of traffic, at what times, of um, knowing who was here, educating them on the legal aspect of the kingdom, right? Kanaka Rangers are heavily invested into um, some of the Lahui aspects of what's going on. Um, there were, we have members from the LHG um, like Kepa Kael and um, Lakia Trask, who are my dear friends. Um, so we kind of represent LHG is the, um, so for those of you who don't know what LHG is, it's the lawful Hawaiian government. Um, it has a constituency of people who vote in and um, discuss certain issues. And, and, and so it's basically a form of Hawaiian nationalism. So some people are here for that Eoka Aina, um, some are here to stop TMT. Some are here because of access rights in terms of Kanaka being able to access these areas based on our um, continued practice, right? Not just practices that they deem as culturally fit, but continued practices um, across the Pai'aino Hawaii. Um, we represent kind of um, 
a plethora of all those issues. We're definitely against TMT. We're definitely against privatized business making money off of natural resources that are set aside for Kanaka. And we're definitely um, trying to work with, I don't want to say within the system, but we're working with people who are a part of that system to ask them how complicit in their principle they're being, whether we recognize them as our oppressive de facto government or whether um, we're just trying to challenge their own complicity in um upholding their kuleana when um you know we we entered to that phase of statehood one of the one of the clauses that they had to uh, maintain was the hawaiian homestead act and as we're here on this mauna as i shared with you before on our guided huakai there's um in this whole p1c1 aspect from mauna awakea all the way down to that red flag by pohaku law there is currently only one um, native Kanaka, I, I don't even want to use that term native, but there's only one Kanaka Ohana who currently resides on the Mauna, and that is um, Uncle Sonny Kaniho and his family. And um, he kind of showed the blueprint of um, some of the more direct actions that the direct nonviolent actions that we take to kind of test those jurisdictional boundaries of where dh um department of hawaiian homestead and where um dlnr kind of fall into this whole mix on on the mauna mahalo for sharing that um so yeah speaking about tours um here at pu honua or pu hulu hulu there is a pu'u and it's called Pu'u Hulu Hulu. Um, and the Kanaka Rangers actually provide tours. Um, can you share a little bit of history on that? Because I know that the tours weren't solidified in, or like in place before. Mm -hmm. And kind of how did that evolve? So basically, um, it all has to do with footprint. And it all has to do with how as Kanaka... Anytime we move on a kahua and we're setting our feet and our intentions to it, um, how there needs to be this kuleana aspect that ties into the greater good of everyone, right? And how Kanaka Rangers, with their data entry collection and with holding space and testing some of the um, uh, legislative jurisdiction in terms of how far off the road are we allowed to set up? Is that um, does that fall into DOT? Does that fall into Department of Hawaiian Homelands? Is DLNR truly an enforcement acting body on behalf of Department of Hawaiian Homelands? So we've had to kind of learn all those things as we've held space here um, in a much different way in comparison to what we all were watching back in 2015 on OEV and on Facebook and the various different media outlets that was making those things available to us. We, um, we kind of had to learn the law of the land, whether it's um, physical, whether it's spiritual, or, or whether it has to do with these ley lines that exist inside of these um, different governing agencies, whether we're talking about the kingdom or whether we're talking about the de facto state of Hawaii as it is, right? Who's really responsible and how well do they understand their responsibilities? Because like our kupuna say, um, ike, right? You, um, the intelligence and and the, the knowledge is in the doing. It's not just in the question asking, right? So basically kind of forming those relationships with who's responsible for what up into what point and why. Um, that's kind of some of the things that um, we more, I don't want to say aggressively or pro provocatively, but um, we, we test those jurisdictions based on a way that um, requires us to um, engage them in different ways than what, some other people in the movement are um, accustomed and comfortable with right so so we we almost acknowledge that um holding space at this level with the lack of um acknowledgement of our people and of our constitution from the days of the kingdom and of what even kuleana lands represent and, and how they're um, supposed to be accurately divvied up um, we're basically getting those guys to acknowledge their responsibility and um, asking them as Kanaka, how do we properly um, start to move forward to claim some of these unclaimed lands with only one family on this whole Mauna? It kind of goes to show um, the success rate of the, of the whole project of Department of Hawaiian Homelands at, at the state that it is when we have 44,000 different kupuna who are waiting on that list to quote my very good friend, Kalaniakea Wilson, 
dying on that list, right? Or getting their ticket pulled, but not being able to approve for that bank loan, not being able to get approved for the bank loan. And how still, whether we're talking about blood quantum or now financial stability and infrastructure, right? Your um how you support yourself um has put on new layers to the original um to the original stature of what what um, Crown Lands is supposed to represent, which is um, the setting aside of natural resources for Kanaka to continue to live the way that they want to live without that type of cultural prejudice, without that type of economical prejudice. But as you can see, there's privatized business of a $1.4 billion project. There's um, there's astronomy tours that are privatized. They I mean, they get the right to have a license that moves, right? I mean, that's kind of um a new thing for me um there's private ex uh, hunting expeditions that happen over here too that um actually dlnr and some of these other people are aware of and they're aware that they're misappropriating these lands and that basically they're putting themselves in criminal territory when um the guidelines say this so as one of my friends was kind of trying to um show me was um he uses the word trustees when he responds to them Right. And it, and in using that word, what we're basically telling the governor, what we're basically telling the mayor is that um you are an acting trust trustee of these lands that have this, this estate that's been set a, a set aside for Kanaka, whether you acknowledge it or not. That's a different issue. But that's that's basically what your kuleana is supposed to be. And we can see how that hasn't been acknowledged Um but how Uncle Sonny Kanihu was the one to kind of show us the blueprint of how to test these jurisdictional boundaries. And he ultimately won as um as I'm from what I understand, there's been court cases that my friend Keppa has also won in court as well. Um, and, and so testing, having the courage and the um, stamina and endurance to um, maintain that struggle. Right. When it's when when you don't have the whole troop here, when the parade is in here, when it's just maybe less than 10 people. Um, staying here by your, by themselves, collecting that data entry during cold nights, and you're having DLNR run up on you there. It's a totally different atmosphere. It's a totally different climate, and you you develop different working relationships with these people who are human beings too. Um, you start to um, understand how you need to depersonalize things, but how these issues and the way you support yourself within them. Um, depending on how complete and how well you carry your kuleana, um, how those issues can um, can become personal at times. But how our goal is not to make enemies. It's really just to get to the um, proper reallocation of these lands, whether we're talking about, if, I mean, if it's easier for them to call these conservation lands and ceded lands, and they're going to change the language and the purpose in that way, fine if that's what the majority is believing we're going to challenge you on just that part alone and um, when there's forty-four thousand people on the list when we have our beneficiary trust council as i like to change the acronym a beautiful thing to consider um those are things that aren't being considered because there's only one family that lives here right but how beautiful it is to see that house there and how how there's a rich history there of uncle sunny being arrested by some of his own family members and the civil war that exists within families right and and, and how at the end of the day if you have the wherewithal to kind of see the process through how um how beautiful of a story it is when that late ties yeah so mahalo for sharing that because what the kind of things that went off for me was that other folks that are kind of involved with the state and DLNR and the astronomy folks are actually utilizing the crown lands essentially for all these other initiatives that I feel that the public doesn't know are being used for like astronomy tours and even um, hunts. I had no idea that they're actually people and other folks that probably aren't from this aina going up and utilizing these kind of sacred spaces in those ways um and mahalo for sharing about was it uncle sunny yeah uncle sunny kuniho uncle sunny kuniho um and his story so right now it's kind of lily noise here but is his house um yeah, right across of the puu honua see those that housing right over there up there that's uncle sunny's house right there oh, okay so there's a a house if you guys come up um 
directly across the Pu'uhonua facing the Mauna. There's one single house, and that's Uncle Sunny's house. Um... So I wanted to ask too, our majority, so majority of the folks of the Kanaka Rangers are from Hawaii Island, though, like currently, yeah? Um, the vast majority of us are from Mokuokiawe. Um, we have other representation on islands like Maui with Kamalani and all the work that they're doing on the east side of Maui. Uh, we have Jojo and Hana who is maintaining his low ease for the people that he, for the families that he kokuas, right? Um, and, and Jojo is here with us again. Um, so, and I believe we have Jesse, who I think has ties to Moku Okiave, but is currently residing in Kauai. And he's had his battles with DLNR, very similar, where he's claiming Kuleana lands with um, the property that they made a lot on and how the people are trying to get ready to sell, but they don't really live there. And Jesse folks are claiming it and, and showing their their ties to it through genealogy and trying these things in court so um yeah if there's other people who who need that support um or or just kind of need um advice or you know some of the different assets that we might be able to provide for you folks whether it's legal representation or just experience um please feel free to contact us we're always looking to support other aloha aina out there but um also, I want to touch upon how the um, we we gathered the kuleana of controlling, not controlling, but um, taking on the pu'u and that that guided huakai. Uh, I don't like to call them tours because it kind of makes me feel like I'm playing into that whole um, colonized approach of um, sharing in that way that isn't really coming from the heart. It's coming from an industry mindset, right? Um, the huakai's were really meant to kind of point out the more endemic species that are existing in this kipuka, some of the work that's being done by Kanaka, whether they're dealing or not, um, what we're able to learn from them when we can reach across the table, and also how that might prepare us to have better negotiations in the future when uh, we see each other on the kahua again in the future. Um, you know, some people are ready to do those things, some people aren't, but basically, um, the Kuleana came with, with the Kupuna Council that's existing now with this movement in 2019, acknowledging that there's definitely this presence of the Kanaka Rangers on the Mauna. Um, just like how I explained in the Huaka'i, right? Some of it is conscious and some of it comes from this unconscious place, right? So whether they um, consciously are aware of what our purpose is or not, how, how it's definitely recognized and how the community kind of identifies with certain aspects of what we're doing and how that will defer. And um, even though we're here for the same issues and we're all trying to ride that wave together, how there will be um, different points of interest that sometimes, um, you know, you start to see people want to handle those things in different ways, right? So um, for the Kanaka Rangers on, on our aspect, um, where Lakia Chas was kind of sharing with me that, that he kind of likes the fact that we're being given this task, this hoike, this challenge of um, can we do it better than the people that normally we're kind of throwing rocks and spears at, right? Can we have one with that kuleana at a higher rate? And that's a tough challenge. And that's why we kind of um, have kind of limited the footprint that goes up there because when we're having so much traffic of all these people coming through um, basically the place where people have worked for a long time to kind of keep a conservation area, um, there's areas where um, we can learn from each other. And at the same time, we need to be aware that um, as they're making their trips through the Pu'uhonua, they're definitely checking to see um, if any of the plants got trampled on how complicit we're being in our practice as Kanaka who are saying aloha aina oya i'o, right? So it's heavy kuleana, right? But it, it's it's heavy kuleana that keeps us engaged. It keeps our hands dirty in a good way, in, in the way that, you know, if you follow the Kanaka Rangers and some of the more artistic aspects of how we try to outreach to our community uh, with La Kia Trask and even Kepa Ka'eo and some of our other friends who are, um, on that Kanaka come home track, right? You know, they, they talk about Uncle Sonny. They talk about the experience. They talk about the occupation of Haleokohio. So that's where the recognition that um, our hui has this, um, has this certain pool, right? Everybody has this allure um, in their different capacities. And um, 
one of the ways that they kind of engaged us and which we were happy to um to to awamo that kuleana was maintaining the pool and actually getting to the aloha aina aspect of it and straying away from the political part of um representation right if we're doing the right things if we're taking on the kuleana and we're trying our best to meet it at the highest level then we'll be in the clear and some of those more um tense issues about politically how things are going and controlling the narrative and how it's being spun uh, we'll leave that to the people who have made that their living or, or or who feel that that's an important part and it is a very important part but another important part is maintaining our presence and our stance after the numbers die down which is what kind of the kanaka rangers are known for in our island and in um, maui too with kamalani and her sister and the way that they hold space and how they're basically self-regulating and becoming and becoming somewhat of a governing hui within their vahi that's what we're trying to encourage people to do on the huaka is to not just plant those mea kanu in the ground but to plant that mea kanu that maka right 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 inside the maka ainana right so if you if you review the songs of um return of the maka ainana kanaka come home um um the throwback to israel kamaka viva ole right um there's there's all these different tracks that are on their counter right they're all basically forms of how we're trying to plant the seed in the people that we're trying to mahina kealo for right and and that's the people who are trying to get to the bottom of some of these issues and start to slowly well not slowly right some of us want to untie these issues fast but uh, when we're talking about dealing with a community where we're only 20 percent of the representation in this state um the growing pain that's involved with that, right? The growing pain as an individual, the growing pain as a family member of those individuals, the growing pains of how you're going to reach out to your community through artistic expression, whether it be um, the murals that we're putting up with Prime and the Homesteady crew and all those guys who I want to aloha and say thank you for. Um, I don't think they realize how much their work has has um, caused an awakening, a whole air mai within the community. Maiko po mai, but ua ao, right? I've, I've awakened because of these, this expression on behalf of the appeal. Um, that's some of the things that the Kanaka Rangers are more um, known for, is that form of outreach and that form of holding space when the numbers die down and truly staying pa'a to, to the cause and not just being there um, when there's all that friction and all that intensity, right? Um, that's... I don't want to say that's the easy part because none of it is easy, right? But that is the part that gets the attention, that gets, um, you know, that type of meriting system where when you're by yourself, it may be less than 10 people on the mountain and DLNR is rolling up on you not once, not twice, but multiple times throughout your tenure here. Um, you, you develop a totally different connection to what this is, right? And it becomes very personal at that point. Yeah, and I like how you uh, mentioned the different kind of people and folks that the Kanaka Rangers are um, working with in co collaboration, especially the art aspect. Because if you come here to uh, Pu'u Honua or Pu'u Hululu, um, there is live art murals that the community can come and actually participate in holding space in even in a little way of signing your name and putting your mark and saying that, you know, you came here, you served your purpose and, you know, you wanted to hold space with all the kia'i here. Um, and you touch upon a lot of things, especially um, a education. I know on when you do take folks up to the pu'u, um, can you talk about how you really try and a educate um the folks that come up and can you tell us how much people you have on these who will cut you up there yeah that's one thing that we've been talking as a hui about is getting those numbers tighter i believe somebody's recording them they average at around 20 ish to 30 ish is about an average group i think one of the bigger groups we did it we had about 80 something people on one so a lot of it has to do with peak time whether it's a weekend time and it's off that school calendar um or whether it's a weekday time and um you know we're getting the people who um 
you know, people are coming up without their kiki and there's not much, there's not as much of an opportunity to kind of outreach there. But, um, how that's not the only, um, that's not the only pahuhopu and that's not the only iini of the huaka'i that's become my personal attachment with it right because of the things that i've learned and the growth that i've done both within the movement and outside the movement when um these issues grab your na'au and you're going through that kanaka screen of other people uh, wanting to see what you have to offer and and not challenge you in a bad way but challenge you in a proactive way of strengthening you and seeing how committed you are to some of these issues um, that can be a very challenging experience so that huakai kind of represents planting that seed in the mind of the people that are visiting at their various different capacities some of them very politically active some of them very educated some of them just feeling that not all turn in them when they see the kupuna get arrested just like myself in 2015 and um they're finding themselves sacrificing their time from their jobs, from their kids, from their normal lifestyle to to come and basically get in touch with what this is and um and, and understand why it's moving them that way, right? It's so so this is a pu'uhonua, right? It's a place of refuge. It's a place where you rehabilitate yourself and prepare yourself to move forward, um, so that you can be a higher functioning self um in the midst of everything that's going on right and we need to embody that with the forms of education that's going on whether it be Pu'uhuluhulu university whether it be those makas that i'm planting in the maka ainana as they make their huaka'i on the pu'u with us whether it be through art on music or, or or the various different channels of education that um people kind of um that evaluation process that you put yourself through as an individual um not just from the eye set of the colonizer and that whole compulsory education system which people need to know um kanakas were the ones that kind of came up with compulsory education as a whole um before the state before statehood before even many other states in america at the time of the overthrow or at the time of the alleged overthrow, I should say, because a joint resolution does not constitute a, a, an exchange of executive power from one nation to another that's recognized within um, the state of um, the, the representatives of the United States as well. But um, we're here at the place that we are, that it was Kanaka that introduced that aspect of um, compulsory education. And that while we are going through a 95% population drop, we also had a 95% literacy rate bilingual for that matter some people who could read upside down from what i'm being told because you had to share the new paper at that time right so those things that we need to reaffirm and reattach ourselves to in terms of the time of our kupuna and seeing the aina and the kahua that they saw and seeing how that changed and why that changed and how that created changes in the way that we use aina in the way we related to aina and basically in the way that we visualize ourselves being um, a part of that ecosystem right so that's that's a big part of the education process for the kanaka rangers is getting getting an individual to understand themselves and the various different levels of how um, they affect the the ecosystem right whether it be economically politically spiritually um just that process that needs to start within you first so that you can better serve your family, your community, your lahui, right? Mahalo for that. And that actually is a good leeway into Pu'u Hulu Hulu University. So um, I wanted to know, do you all attend classes and do you guys have a collaboration effort with the university itself? Um, as like, do you guys teach classes as well? There were some classes that um, we were doing. Um, I believe it was called like Aina Pula Pula, if I'm not mistaken. But it, it was it basically laid out the um, the details that I shared with you about the origination of the Kanaka Ranger program, um, the things like the Beneficiary Trust Council, our representation on behalf of Kupuna who are on the waiting list, the reclamation of hawaiian homestead lands there was a class i think we did about four or five of them with lakia chas kalani akel wilson and kepo kael representing their different involvements and um and what aspects they kind of bring um a lot of 
we, we pull a lot of our ike is pulled from different places and a lot and a lot of our ike doesn't necessarily even though you know we have guys like Kalani Akia and Lakia Trask who who are working on their PhDs or working on their degrees at the Kula Nui right um, both being education teachers within their own communities through um Kaumeke and um um Ehunui Kaimalino um there's definitely this need to um to hit the academic aspect but to bring that academic and that form of evaluation in terms of the eye of the colonizer reaching out to people who normally wouldn't um navigate those waters so we're heavily influenced by guys like um uncle skippy you know who has very poetic uh, ways of talking about these things where you can tell there's ike in in the monao that he's sharing but it's not necessarily that ike that comes from that kula nui right one of the things that he talks about that was shared with me is um i don't want to um olelo pela pela but he says kukai first right you got to deal with the kukai first he uses a different word but uh, just out of respect for our listeners i don't want to olelo pela pela but um he says kukai first so when we're talking about foot imprint right or, or our footprint on the pu'u right and we're getting 2,000 to 3,000 visitors in a conservation aspect we have to understand where all that where all that kukai goes right where does what happens to the luas after they're done what happens to the gray water um is propane tanks 24 7 at the scale that we're doing now really the most aloha aina way of um being complicit in our principle or do we need to start to look at other solutions for what this is right things grow organically you need to reach out to people at the level that they're at whether it be lifestyle choices or whether it be their um, participation in that form of evaluation when you're talking about Ike of higher levels of education, right? We're, we're, we're seeing the higher levels of education from that side with um, the Huli group and a lot of those PhDs and how they're trying to bring that to the Mauna. And uh, we want to cock over that. And we definitely want to look at opportunities to work alongside with them and, and create um, new, new forms of... Um, sustaining the movement but sustaining that ike so where that iini in your in your na'au is starting to build an ua ho mai yeah right ua au, um you're also continuing to malama that right and how it doesn't need to feel like these things where um oh i get my ike through through my job through my work through my tending of the land if i'm a mahi ai or if i'm a um if i'm a kanaka lavaita right i learn the things that i need to learn through that craft some people learn things through the Kula Nui and um, how we prize that level of Ike in that evaluation system and how that's a very Maika'i thing to do because I want to model myself off of the Kalei Kos, the Ko'oka'i Kanukas, the Lakia Tras, um, the Mililani Tras, right? all these people who have committed their whole life to raising the bar of Ike for themselves. But how ultimately ike can be used and these this pala pala can be used in a way that creates division within the community as well where um show me the paperwork that certifies you to be the one to talk about these issues and how sometimes that's relevant and how sometimes that actually uh, that actually creates a barrier that prevents people that are in that part where that maka is about to seed it's about to bloom but um there's this hesitation in that aspect because um, that colonized approach to learning doesn't necessarily recognize your existence and your commitment to that part when when there's this whole this whole perspective flip right that happens within you which is what happens with a lot of people and why the Pu'uhulu Hulu University is such a valuable resource and how we're looking forward to um sh not strengthening our presence but um building that relationship to kind of reach out and and find those solutions of how we we reach out to these people like Punana Leo if anybody that's been enrolled there's those um Olelo Hawaii classes for the Ohana to get the parents to start to mitigate that gap that exists where one generation might not Olelo, but your kiki are going to Olelo in a lot of pao, whether you choose to or not. So wanting to support that, wanting to kako that with extra classes, right? And I think Pu'uhulu Hulu and um, what is, what is her name again? 
Presti. I think they're doing a great job of bringing that to the Mauna, which was an aspect that didn't exist back in 2015. Something that I'm excited about because my role model is kind of like Uncle Skippy and some of those guys. Um, I tend to kind of steer more, to more towards that track of learning through experience and not necessarily um, through that evaluation pr um, process of being in school right and certifying myself that way but how it's been a question on my mind ever since 2015 and how this presents the opportunity to possibly do both i love that you talk about um different varying education systems and that here at Pu'u Hulu Hulu, it brings out that you know there's a place for everybody and the ike comes from everything the aina from all kind of levels you know from experience to some kanaka go to school and that those knowledge systems are welcomed here especially at the university level um because i do feel that now is the time to display that you know us kanaka moali we are a diverse people and there's all types of knowledge systems and all of them are welcomed and they're honored in a way that is evident in the um in the collaboration here at the Puhonua. so mahalo for sharing that um so kind of wrapping it up um what do you see happening after this for either the Kanaka Rangers or what do you see happening um, or envision for the Lahui um, after they do not build the TMT telescope here? I like how you put the ikolelo ola, ikolelo make, right? We need to be careful about the things we say because in words there's life, in words there's death. Um, so in hoping that they don't continue with this or that the way that we hold space ultimately results in them seeking other opportunities elsewhere. Um, mahalo nui for that and setting that part of the um, Kanaka intention out for our listeners. Um, in terms of the Kanaka Rangers, what do I foresee? Um, like I said, it's a big kuleana, this part that we've taken on, and, and which is why we're kind of letting it grow organically. Like how I see on the huakai, things are going to grow as our ike grows with it and no faster. Otherwise, that whole Anunu story that I kind of tell about, you know, how that vine only grows in three different vahis, not only on the Moko Kiave, but in the Honua Apau, right? It only exists in three different vahis in the entire world. And how somebody might have been with the best intentions putting their hands on it in a way where they're trying to help the core so they're taking it off the core not realizing how endangered that species actually is and um how it's it's okay to make an honest mistake right it's 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 not okay to make the same mistake over and over and over again right and how how that is um some of the outreach things that we're trying to do as well where do you do you acknowledge these patterns that you're in and why they exist within you Right. So I, I foresee that our kuleana is going to um, be a lot more functional and a lot less. Um, it's going to be like it's, it's going to be something that's physical and not just something that's understood in your mind in, 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 a, in a form of perception. Right. Now we have kuleana. Now we have the, the aina to work on. Now we have places to um get seedlings from and and put in the male canoe and start to take over that responsibility much like the ranger program in australia that's what i foresee for the kanaka rangers and actually um how how we're providing to the solution aspect of it and not just raising awareness to the problems because it's easy to raise awareness to the problems it's hard to want to continue to engage where um you know some of these relationships we've left with the holly going down and and that being considered stolen property by some people um it's left a gap in terms of how we're able to work with some of these agencies that exist whether we like it or not whether we accept it or not on a political area um that's that's what's happening right so we need to kind of figure out a way to um get past our differences and put those things to a close in its proper procedure whether it be legally <coughs> 
or whether it be through um you know by working together on these things that we agree on instead of the things that we don't agree on how that can grease the wheels to possibly better negotiations in the future and um i hate that word actually just better interactions right from one person to another um with with our varying degrees of the way we view our kuleana um, whether you're conservation first and you're pro forest, pro aina first, or whether you're pro kanaka first and how a kanaka is a part of the aina and how we need access to these places so we can awamu that kuleana, how those things get better as you kind of repetitiously do it. Just like how our ancestors said, no kahanaka ike, right? Like you're, you're, you're not going to get better at doing it by not working together. You're going to get better by putting yourself in some of those um, difficult positions and, and figuring out how to navigate those waters. Um, in terms of the movement as a whole and, and what I foresee for um, what's going on, I mean, we definitely have the attention span of, of various different people who are tied into the Mauna, whether it be through their personal interests, right, their privatized interests, whether it be to the way that they govern these things, and, and they're supposed to be acting trustees of this estate that benefits the Kanaka first, and how that's not the reality, right? Those things coming to light too, um, and how those are good things, right? How some people view these growing pains as um they're uncomfortable, right? And we stray away from discomfort, but how this allows us the opportunity to strengthen ourselves um, primarily as individuals. I mean, and primarily how those individuals represent a collective, right? So whether we're ready to talk about those governance issues and ready to move forward with, with that type of understanding has to do with how well those seeds that we're planting germinate in our minds, germinate in our hearts, germinate in our na'al, and how we're able to see each other at the different levels that we're at and able to facilitate each other at those different levels as well. That's the challenge. And, and that's where sometimes um that ike and that, that pola pola in terms of a PhD or whatever, it can be um, very inspiring. And at the same time, it can be very humbling and it can create barriers if we're not um, careful in creating a cultural hegemony, if you will, that exists where only these people get to say what is culturally relevant and what is not right and how these people are um not for a, not in any negative way but how they're heavily biased to what their life's work has been right so if your practice is hula practice how you're going to follow hula protocols you're going to follow the ike that comes to your to your family or to your halal in terms of hula but if you're a hell practitioner how that might not necessarily be the same practice you know so where do these things that are um physical and and um, spiritual manifest themselves in the same space in the same resource we have to adjust those things as kanaka as well not just in terms of how these lands are used but how how do we properly acknowledge each other when we're on the kahua as well you always raise such good points um and I challenge our listeners to kind of think of their kuleana too on you know what happens after as well um so i wanted to ask as well um if folks do want to join the kanaka rangers or if they're coming up to the mauna or Pu'uhululu and they want to contribute in that way can they and also um yeah can you speak upon that for sure so um the Kanaka Ranger home base is, um, if you guys are familiar with that blue um, Humaula Station sign that they love to be ha'aheo about, but how when we applied to Awamada Kuleana, they, divide, they denied my friends the ability to maintain that tradition that they're so proud of. Um, we're located right next to that sign with the two 20 by 30 gray tents that are right behind the donation tent. That's kind of where we huya, that's where we have our halavais, that's where we kind of have... Um, when we need our when we need our hui's attention kind of aligned that's where we get together and that's where people are allowed to come and um you know ho'olauna with us and get to know us and that's one of the things that i really i don't want to um toot our own horn but we're accessible as a hui and i think that's one thing that resonates with people as well is um you can do our huakai and you can put me on that pedestal thinking that um I'm something special and I have all this ike when I'm not. I'm just like you. I, I was in the same place that you were in back in 2015 trying to sort all of this out and trying to figure out 
um how do i properly navigate these waters now that i feel this way right so the thing about kanaka rangers is we try to be accessible whether it's through our music through our art or whether you just want to come and drink alva and be part of the conversation at the end of the night when we wind down we're very much accessible we're um other people need to kind of have certain boundary lines so that they can focus in a way that's um more relevant to their positions and to the kuleana that they feel they need to uphold um how you know you're seeing all these kapu signs everywhere right like that's not the case when you come to our hale right we don't have a kapu sign um we appreciate what kapu is we appreciate the reconsecration of these lands in terms of the puuhonua and the royal order supporting and and the uh, ali'i aspect of the peak of, of the kino structure and the kahuna aspect of the kino structure but for the most part we try to be accessible because we want that outreach to our community we want to reach people at the level they're at and inspire them to make their changes to get more involved as they see fit with the time that they can allocate we're not judging anybody we're not asking anybody to commit themselves more than what they need to and we're not asking you for these certifications that um um, that may or may not quantify you as being um, an ideal candidate or not. If you just want to come and volunteer for the day, there are some things that we can have you do, like the pu'u. We also, um, there's other aspects that I don't want to discuss out loud on the radio of what we do, but um, there, there might be a capacity there. There's also things like, um, especially for people that can't spend long amount of times, um, it's hard to become kama aina with what your responsibility and so some of some of the other things like just the cafeteria um and the kitchen and being a part of that whole process that's a big one um getting rid of the waste as well the gray water helping with the lures in the morning um donations um even if you want to engage on your own things that you want to share like i build a hale where um it's kind of like a hale mua slash hale noa at the same time because, you know, I ha we, we have the halepea next door to me, right, with um, Havani and her girls and um, the things that they do and the manawahine aspect of their line that they represent under um, the guidance of Pua Case and some of those people, Kalani Flores, um, Havani herself, Lana Kila, um, there's Jamaica who's, who's in that tent as well. Uh, Malia, who who's getting ready to do some of her artwork in terms of um, multimedia and movie making. So there's an interesting collection of people. You basically have to build your your you have to build that leo. You have to build that voice, and if you build it, they'll come. So there's like a halimua where um you know I do martial arts and I do hula. So there's a pa hula. There's a pa ha koko. There's there's a place for um that cool energy that exists within our kane to kind of be expressed while in kapu aloha, um and while involving the kids too. You know I have a pretty large um punana leo library. Uh, most of the books are makolelo Hawaii Valeno. There are books on makolelo pelikania. So kiki that are spending time here who don't have a soft surface to kind of nestle up with their family in. Um, you have a place where it's matted. It's flat ground. There's no uh uh. There's no pohoi hoi. You can get comfortable with your kiki and read a book and engage them in that way. You have to normalize the struggle. Right? You have to normalize the activity that we're doing here. So whether you're um, Malama Kokino, right? Hoi Kaiko Kokino. I've had I've had women come up into um, my hale and want to do their CrossFit thing. Um, I want to get tables up and I have some whiteboards up to possibly do some of the classes in there as well. Because it's difficult to do classes at Puuhulu Hulu University because it's open air. And there's so much good mana and ike in the air that... Um, if you were to teach a, um, a five-year-old like that in any other setting, um, how do you lock in their attention span, right? You got to build those walls. You got to get people to focus in on just what you're talking about. So I'm planning on using the Hale for that um, and using the Hale to train and, and develop that that part of you that's on your ku side and your hina side right um you're activating yourself physically and you're challenging yourself mentally and spiritually as well so for anybody that comes up the the kanaka ranger tents that are 220 by 30s by the humaula sheep station sign um right behind the donation tent and i'm right across the street um holding space right right on the edge of the pavement right in front of the ahu next to um havani and her friends over there as well Mahalo for that. And yeah, so 
like he said, come up to Pu'uhuluhulu and check it out. And you can see all this great collaboration that's going on. Um, so can they contact you all like via any social networks? Or are you guys just strictly here at the Pu'uhonua? Um, so for me, myself, I don't have any multimedia accounts. I don't even have a phone. Uh, 2015 really taught me how those tools can work to our benefits and ultimately how those tools um, can be used against you and they'll challenge you personally on certain levels um, with the type of access that other governing bodies, other governing agencies have to technology and those type of things. But we do have a, uh, we do have a Facebook account. We also have an Instagram account. Um, we ask everybody that comes up on our huakais that, you know, they feel moved to share something. Um, we guys, we give you guys the freedom to, um, to take pictures and engage in that way and take videos, but that you hashtag us so that we can kind of figure out um, what your intentions are with trying to align with us and how we can better serve you or how we might be able to better utilize you if somehow you want to help us, right? So using those hashtags in a, in a beneficial way and using those likes to, to create more like-mindedness is something that's very maika'i. Um, we do have a nonprofit set up. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the proper channel is to get to that is, but um, I'm sure if you navigate through our pages, um, somebody on our multimedia team will be able to um, kind of get you to that point. But we do have a targeted nonprofit set up for Kanaka Rangers as well. If you just kind of want to donate to some of our causes alone, um, there's the donation tent as you pull up inside of the Pu'uhonua as well. But um yeah, there's we, we've definitely had people coming to us and asking us if we've been getting those donations, if the materials are getting to us. And, um, you know, tracking those things down is a little bit harder if you give it to a third party to handle. So if you know where you want that support to go and you're looking for it to come to us, then um, the best way is alui ke alo, kekai, kekai, kanaka, iki, kanaka, right? So come meet us, come hang out with us come share space with us we're open to everyone and every anybody right no matter what your ek is no matter what your nationality your ethnicity your political beliefs are um, if you're down for the same causes that we are we want to figure out a way to activate you and move you so please come come by and support us and um, make sure you're hashtagging us and making us a part of your personal movement and growth as well mahalo la so from kanaka rangers um, so if you guys want to follow us, make sure you do on Instagram and Facebook, Our Native Stories. Also download our application, Native Stories, and you can follow us on any podcast at Native Stories. And we look forward in you tuning in and listening to some more of our Mana series. Peace. Thank you for listening to us on Native Stories. If you have a story you would like us to tell, or want to sponsor a future podcasts, location story, or walking tour, please email us at info at nativestories.org.